I do believe this is a dream, my little star. But who's to say that dreams can't also be real? With the recent number of ponies who should have been dead, but weren't that I've seen the last few days, I shouldn't have been so surprised by seeing Hailstorm. I saw him die in Stardust Memories. I had heard about his death from a few ponies from Stable 97 and from Doorstop. He couldn't be a synth when he died because the Ministry didn't work with the Enclave then. Even if a couple of ponies here used to belong to the Enclave. So either his death was faked so well that even Hailstorm's best friend believed it happened, or the pony I was looking at was a synth. I looked back over at Stormy, saying, Please don't tell me you made Stardust's best friend into a synth. Hailstorm looked confused as he said, A synth? I'm not a synth. Why would you even think something like that? I looked back at him while Stormy tried to come up with an answer to my question. Because I saw you die in Stable 97? Well, Stardust saw it, I mean. I saw through his memories. You were crushed under the stable door trying to make sure that he got out. You gave your life to save his. His confusion grew as he looked back at Stormy, who for once was at a loss for words. Doc, what's the courier talking about? Why would Stardust think that I died that way? You told me you made sure that his memory was modified so he thought that I got out before him. Really? That's the story you have slammed into your head? I asked with a laugh. Hailstorm, I fixed all of Stardust's memories when I took him back to Stable 97. I saw every true memory that meant something to him. Your death was one of them, so either their memory modification tech is a lot better than I thought, or you're not a real pony. Finally, Stormy spoke up, but not with an answer to my question. DC-001, full shutdown, code Stormy, X-0990-783, master override. Hailstorm's eyes went cloudy and his head fell. In a matter of seconds, he was nothing more than a lifeless doll. My eyes went wide as I looked back at her. So you did make a synth a hailstorm? Only a little. Plus, I had no choice, she said, sounding panicked. Hailstorm was the stallion that was meant to become the perfect soldier. I spent years protecting his genome therapy to make him into what he was. And then he goes and dies while trying to escape the stable. I wanted him away from the Enclave along with Stardust, but not dead. So I used some of his DNA that we collected a week or so before his death and started building a synth. And let me guess, Stardust has no idea, I said. He can't know. And that's why, as Wrath, he's been told to keep his face hidden when he's dealing with you and your friends. Grimm was put in charge of making sure his skills were up to par, that's why he was told to become the new Wrath. We only added him to the sins after you saved Stardust from being pride. If Stardust found out, he'd kill me, she said, sounding worried. I don't even know why he's here. He should be with the others, getting information and planning whatever you're up to right now. He's our spy. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. And after I put so much trust into Stormy... I find that she's been hiding something big from my best friend. I growled and said, You're going to tell Stardust the truth about his this wannabe hailstorm? They both have the right to know. And then after that, you're going to have him tell me everything he knows about the sins. Her eyes went even wider as she said, Shadow, I mean it. I can't tell Stardust. He doesn't need to know. Doesn't need to know what? Stardust said from the doorway, not seeing the form of his best friend. His eyes were stuck on me with that goofy smile on his face. Hey, see you're finally awake. That's great, because I wanted to see if you were up to having something to eat. You gotta try this thing they have in the restaurant near the clinic. It is freaking awesome. Stormy looked like she'd just been hit with a hammer. If her eyes got any wider, they were going to pop right out of her head. I took the opportunity to smile over at her, saying, Yeah, 
What doesn't he need to know, Stormy? Stormy jumped right into action. Stardust, you need to understand something. I wanted to tell you this, but it was scared of how you might react. It was too late, though. My friend's eyes fell on Hailstorm's body, his eyes falling on the mark on the armor, seeing the mark of wrath. Then, as he walked into the room, ready to attack, his eyes fell on the face, and he froze. He reached a hoof around and slowly placed it on Hailstorm's mane. Then he asked in a shaky voice, Is... is this really him? I mean, did you make my best friend into a synth? I had no choice. He wasn't supposed to die the night you two escaped. We needed him, and after he died, this was the only way, Stormy said. To my utter shock, Stardust looked up from the blank expression of his friend and over at Stormy with tears in his eyes. You brought my best friend back. My brother. Thank you. Wait, you're not upset? I asked. Y you do realize that's not really him? It's just a well-made robot that looks like him? I'm a little surprised too, Stormy said. Stardust sniffed, then said, Hailstorm's dead. I know that. I saw it happen. I beat myself up every day for not doing more to save him that night. I'd do anything to have him back. Yeah, I know it really isn't my friend, but at the same time, as long as his memories are intact, then in a small way, it's like getting him back again. Please, tell me you didn't mess with his mind. Only a little. Just to explain why he wasn't in Stable 97 anymore, he also thinks you escaped with the help of another. He thinks that you think he escaped before you did, but you have no idea if he's alive or not. Apart from that, I was able to place every memory that was in Hailstorm's mind from a week before you escaped to keep it intact. We haven't told him what he is yet. I think that if he knew, he might go insane. Most synths with memories of another normally do. I still think he should know, I said, still a little pissed at Stormy for keeping her secret. She sighed. I know you do, Shadow, and don't give me that disappointed look. It wasn't my idea to keep this from you, just Stardust. Your mother wanted me to make sure that no one ever found out about him. Honestly, I'm still shocked he's here. I hope everything is okay. Stardust finally looked back at me and then said, Shadow, I know you don't like this, but Hailstorm's my friend. Not yours. I think you should be left in the dark about what he is. At least for now. I threw both my hooves up, still marveling that I was still able to do that, and then said, Fine! Both you can lie to a poor synth about what he is. He smiled, then came over to me and pulled me into a hug. Thank you. I'll make sure he finds out sooner or later, but right now, I don't want him going crazy because of the knowledge. With an eye roll, I sighed and laid back down. I was expecting you to be pissed, but since you're not, let's get this over with. Stormy sighed as well, saying, DC-001, power on. Delete the last two minutes of memory and restart from there. Code... Stormy X 0990783 Master Override. A moment later, Hailstorm blinked his eyes and looked around at Stormy and I, not noticing Stardust, who had taken a few steps back. I need to know how did Grim die? Stormy looked down at her hooves and then nodded. Yes, Hailstorm. She did just a few days ago. She gave her life to save shadows, but I don't understand. How did you know, and why did you come back here? Stardust kept his muzzle shut as he watched. Hailstorm scratched his mane, then said, I'm not really sure. Grim told me that once she put a spell on me to let me know when she was in trouble and to come back here if I felt it go off, I couldn't get away from the sins fast enough. It took me a day or so to come up with some excuse and then head straight here. 
I guess I was a little late, he said, then looked back at me. I'm sorry, Courier. I haven't had the chance to introduce myself. Name's Hailstorm, and I'm sure you know me better as Raph. I'm not your enemy. I've been working as a spy for Grimm for a few weeks. She knows who you are, you dipshit! Stardust said with a chuckle, his eyes flashing with what looked like a mix of pain and happiness at the same time. I told her all about you, you lady killer. Hailstorm whipped his head around and saw Stardust. His eyes went wide as he looked back at Stormy, then back at Stardust again. You're here? God, is this Dusty? I've wanted to see you for months. He moved forward and embraced Stardust in a crushing hug. <coughs> too tight, too tight. Stardust choked out. I said, get off me, you overly emotional metal-clad dork, he said as he tried to push off the large pegasus. Dude, it's not cool to have your best friend hug you. Even I wasn't happy with the lies they were telling Hailstorm. I couldn't help the laugh that escaped my muzzle as I said, You hug me all the time, Stardust, and I thought I was your best friend. Hailstorm finally let him go, looking a little sheepish. Stardust just shook him off and said, You're different. You're a mare. Stallions don't hug each other. That's just weird. Also, I can have two best friends. Hailstorm seemed not to care too much about our banter because he interrupted, saying, Dusty, I've been wanting to talk to you ever since I found out you escaped the stable, and even more since I heard you got the memories back after becoming pride. I'm glad you were able to escape that place after I got away. I was worried the general would have killed you, or worse. He shrugged. And honestly, it was thanks to Doorstop that I got out. He managed to give me some power armor and set up the way for me to escape. Didn't know it was him until later, but still. Anyway, I had no idea you escaped. They even told us you were dead. Hailstorm laughed. <laughs> I'm not surprised. After what I learned about what they were doing, I had to get out. Wait till I tell you what I learned since. He kept on talking as Stardust listened. Stormy took a moment to move closer to me, saying... I think I know the reason he came back. I looked over at her. He just said it was a spell? No, I don't think it was. Your mother was the one who helped program the Corsair chip he has in his head. I'm guessing that she programmed it to notify him if something happened to her and in the event of her death that he was supposed to come back to the Ministry like he did. If I know Grimm the way I know I do, I'm guessing his chip is set up to only take full orders from her or anyone related from her. That is, unless a pony like me activates our master overrides. Give it a try. I bet he'll do whatever you tell him to do, she said. I'm not going to just order a synth around, I said. I need to know. It's important, she said, looking irritated. I rolled my eyes again. Fine. Then I set over to Hailstorm's story. Hailstorm, can you please sit down and be quiet for a moment? He looked over at me, then smiled. Sure thing. Sorry if I got in the middle of whatever you were doing. I just haven't seen my friend in a long time. To my amazement, he sat down, smiling towards me. God, is this? He's fucking whipped. I said, nah. What? Stardust asked, looking utterly confused. We'll tell you later, Stormy said, looking at Hailstorm. Hailstorm? I need you to tell us what you learned while you were with the remaining sins. His eyes glazed over a little, then he said, I can't tell you, ma'am. My urges from Grimm were to only report my findings to her. She looked over at me, so I said, She's gone now, Hailstorm, but we need to know the information. Where are the remaining sins, and what can you tell us about their movements? He sighed. You've got a point. He stood up again, then continued, saying, They're holed up in the old mining town near Gravel City, a few miles east of New Pegasus right now, getting ready for an assault on the NLR on older orders from the new High Council. Envy's hiding among the NLR officers, gathering intel, while Sloth and Lust keep their hideouts safe. 
They've managed to capture Greed, who was caught sneaking around just a few days ago. He's alive, but he'll be sent up to Stratus to be executed with former High Council Pony Nightshade in the next couple of days. After that, the Sins will start looking for new members so they can make a move on new Pegasus. We got word from the higher-ups a few hours ago that a new pony would be coming to us, who is very powerful and helping us with new Pegasus. What's this pony's name? I asked. They told us her name was Stargazer, he said, and then added, Kind of a silly name, if you ask me. Sounds like she's the type with her head in the clouds. My new heart nearly stopped at that. I looked at Stardust, then Stormy, saying, It has to be Aquila. She's working with the Enclave. Who's Aquila? Hailstorm asked, looking confused. That, in turn, confused Stormy, as she said, You know who that is. Grim told you about her before. The monster that lived inside Shadow's head. Hailstorm looked up thoughtfully and then shook his head. Nope. All that she told me about the courier was that she was to be kept away from the sins and her plans. She then told me that she was now on our side and helping, but to keep my face hidden from her and her friends. She didn't want Stardust to know who I was at the time. Damn. She must have made a protocol in place to wipe his memory banks of any information about Aquila or Stargazer or Falling Shadows if she died. Stormy said angrily. That sounds like her. I said as I looked curiously at Hailstorm and Stardust, who I was still surprised was okay with all of this. Aquil is an evil creature using a synth body at the moment. It's hard to explain everything, but she has to be stopped. I'm sure she wants to get into the Lucky Horseshoe so she can activate an old project. She's using the Enclave's power and ponies along with the Sin's hatred for me to get her agenda done. Stardust looked thoughtful and said, Sounds like it. Also, Hailstorm, you said you were going to execute Nightshade and Greed soon? He nodded. Yeah, the trial's in two days, but Sloth said it's just for show. He'll be found guilty and executed two days after that. Good, Shadow said, uh, his grin growing. How is my father's execution a good thing? I asked, anger growing in my voice. Easy because I'm sure that Aquila is using this as a way to get control over more of the Enclave. She's working with them, and she needs the ponies running Stratus now to have full control over the population. Nightshade was a well-loved leader in both politics and the military. If she's found guilty and executed, the ponies who still love him will see him as a criminal. Also, it gives us a chance to mess up her plans. Stardust said, What do you mean? Stormy asked. I think I'm following what he's saying, Hailstorm said. If Nightshade is able to escape, a lot of the military and more will still follow him. He'll be able to tell the ponies what really happened to him and get more allies for us. If he does that, then Winterfrost, who's winning Stratus now, won't be able to get the following he needs to attack New Pegasus. So you have a plan to rescue my dad? I asked. Oh, I have a plan for more than just saving your pops. We need to slow Aquila down, right? He asked. Yeah, I said. Well then, I say we do everything we can to make sure she's stopped. Or at the very least, slowed down in reaching our goals. Stardust said with a laugh. Just tell us the plan already. Stormy said, sounding irritated. His face fell a little, as he said, Well, I know you won't like part of the plan, Shadow, but trust me, it'll have to be this way. We'll have to split up our team. You're right, I don't like that plan, I said. But let's hear what you have in mind. A grin returned. We need to strike the Enclave in three different ways, all at once. First, I think we have to send Aura, Bite, and Wingnut back to New Pegasus so she can get her Shadow Talons to help the NLR. They need to be warned there's a spy among them. I'm sure Hailstorm will know which pony Envy is posing as. I thought about it, then said, Not a bad idea. 
But how will you get them to believe that Envy is in there? To answer, Stardust pulled out one of these silver bug whistles from his saddlebags. Got one of these from that nutty Emperor dude. You said they made it impossible for Envy to keep his form? We'll have Aura use this to get him down. If we're lucky, we might be able to capture him. If not, I'm sure he'll run at the very least. True, or he'll kill every pony there, I said. Hailstorm shook his head. Envy is crazy strong, but even he can't take on the entire NLR on his own. He wouldn't risk it, so he'll most likely run when he's revealed. I hope he does at least. I don't think he's dumb enough to stay and fight, but lately he's seemed more confident in his abilities and has some delusions of grandeur. Okay, so while Aura's taking care of all that, what are the rest of us going to be doing? I asked. Stardust smiled. We'll send Hailstorm back to the other two Sins, then Wind Thrasher to keep an eye on them and spy. Hailstorm can keep acting like he's Wrath while Wind Thrasher watches his back and reports to us what's going on. Once we're finished, the NLR, and the next part of my plan, we'll take them out at once and for all. You really think Wind Thrasher should be sent on a mission like that? She's not stable right now, I said. He shrugged. True, but she's got enough of her elixir to keep her mind okay for this mission. And if she slips, well, that wouldn't be a bad thing if she attacked Lustrous Law. It's one of those win-lose situations, though I'm not completely happy with. I don't like it, honestly. Even if she managed to kill them, she'd be devastated for killing them, even if she doesn't like them. Also, there's a chance that she'll kill Hailstorm, or she might never come out of the bloodlust. I said. That's a very likely possibility, but she's the only pony on our side who can move silently, hide perfectly, and see in the darkest places. If it helps, I'll talk to her about it first, Stardust said. And don't worry about me. I can escape any other flyer. I'm one of the fastest Pegasi alive, Hailstorm said with a boast. He has a point, Stormy said. He's almost as fast as Rainbow Dash herself. If he pushes himself a little more, he might be able to pull off a sonic rain boom one day. I have no idea what that is, but if you say he can do it, then I trust you. I said. Sounds cool, though. Good, because I believe this plan might work if it's done right. Stormy said. I do have to ask, what will you be doing, Stardust? He chuckled. Easy. Solstice, Shadow, and I will go up to Stratus and rescue her father and Thundercracker. Er, greed. Ah, whatever. You know what I mean. How do you expect me to go up to Stratus? I'm a unicorn. I can't walk on clouds, I said. That's not true, Stormy said. I can teach you the Cloudwalker spell. It's very easy to learn, and it lasts for a day with each casting. Though you have one problem with that plan, Stardust. How so? Getting into Stratus isn't as easy as just flying up to it, she said. She's right, Solstice said, making all of us jump. She grinned at us from the doorway, Aura and Wind Thrasher behind her. Sorry, I didn't want to interrupt your planning. Watching you jump was entertaining, though, so thanks for that. Yeah, we all came to see how you're doing, Shadow. And we came to find some strange Pegasus wearing Wrath's armor and you four plotting something. Aura said with a slight smile. So, did you recruit another Sin to our side or something? Aren't reformed bad guys getting kind of old? I blushed a little, then gestured at a hailstorm. This is Hailstorm, an old friend of Stardust's from 97. He thought Hailstorm was dead, but it turns out he's been alive the whole time and helping Stormy with my mother. I thought Hailstorm was crushed by a door or something, Wind Thrasher said, looking utterly confused. Isn't that what you told me, Stardust? Yeah, I thought so too. I'll explain later. Right now, we need to keep planning. I'll fill you all in as we go, he said, looking back at Solstice. So... Why can't we just fly up to Stratus? 
She rolled her eyes and said, Because Stratus has protection protocols? There are defense systems layered within the clouds all over the city and underneath it. The skies are constantly guarded by Enclave soldiers and raptors. The only way to get into the city is if you're an Enclave officer, or by taking a transport from the skyport. Also, to top it off, just to walk or fly around the city, you need to have an identification. If you go past any of the hundreds of nodes all over the city and you don't have one, you'll be flagged and arrested. The city sounds impossible to get into, I said. If that's all true, then how did Winter Frost get her soldiers in? My mom said that he blocked the city off and attacked some of the on patrol units until he could sneak some of his pegasi into the city and take down your father. He's an enclave soldier from Stratus and has the identification he needs, and so did his soldiers, I'm guessing. As for us, well, I'm technically an unmarshed Dashite. Stardust is a runaway, and Shadow, you're the most wanted pony in Stratus at the moment. There's no way we can get in, Solstice said. Damn. I was hoping my plan would work, Stardust said, looking defeated. A moment passed by, then Stormy perked up and said, Solstice, your mother's fairy glitter, right? Yeah, so what? Solstice answered. Stormy smiled wide. Then I think I can make this work for you. We all perked up and listened as Stormy laid out her idea to all of us. After that, Stardust filled the others in on part of his plan. We all talked for an hour or more, fine-tuning the plans, the others adding their own ideas to make the three-part strike against both the Enclave and Aquila work perfectly. The whole time we talked, I did my best to ignore the sadness still lingering in the back of my mind of Mom's death. I can accept the reason she'd sacrificed herself for me, but it was still hard. Planning a strike against the Enclave helped me with that, however. That and the idea that there was a way to help my dad. Finally, once all the plans apart from one was finished, Solstice asked a question. The only thing is that even though my mom can help us with getting there and maybe into it, how are we going to fly up Shadow? We can't just carry her. It'll look too suspicious, she said. Ah, that's easy. Well, easy isn't the right word because it'll be hard. But the answer in itself is easy, Stormy said. Take one of the transports from Wolfsbane. We all looked at her as I asked, What do you mean, take a transport from Wolfsbane? Wolfsbane and his steel rangers have been attacking the Enclave patrols and transports for years now. Unlike most of the steel rangers who destroy the Enclave tech, he keeps it for himself and his garrison. They've captured a few Enclave Pegasi as prisoners of war over the years to help work the Enclave tech they have. If you can get into the Palisade and the city under it, you'll be able to get one, I think. You want us to sneak into the L.A. Steel Ranger's stronghold and steal an airship? I asked. No, I want you to walk right in, Stormy said with a grin. And how do you expect us to do that? I asked. Head to a town east of here called Dragonbridge and look for a filly named Black Delilah. She'll have a way to get you in. One of my sins is stationed there, and she's always going into the small town during camps. She complains all the time about steel rangers and how pushy her elder is. She's also a big fan of a certain courier. If you meet with her, I'm sure she'll help you out. You're forgetting the fact that the Steel Rangers know who I am, I said. Oh, that's an easy fix, but I'll tell you more about that later. I think you and one of the others should go to the Applewood sign, with the help of Black Delilah, and mess a few things up for the Angry Elder, Stormy said. Okay, let's say that this works. Who are you going to have go with me? Every pony here has their own job to do. I said. Stormy's smile grew as she said, Vervain, of course. Vervain is back in New Pegasus, I said angrily. She is. But White Oak sent a synth in the area to give her a message to come to the Ministry. 
She was told what happened about Grimm and you. If my reports are correct, our synth will be bringing her in in a couple of hours, she said. My eyes went wide as I said, White Oak's finally going to let Vervain know she's still alive? Stormy's smile faded. She has no choice. She didn't want to, but she knows how much Vervain cares for you, so she sent for her. She's going to be pissed. I'm sure she will, but it has to be done. If anything, though, she'll probably cry before she can muster up the gull to hit her. Anyway, once she's here, we'll fill her in on what's going on, and I'm sure she'll go with you. And before you say something about her being recognized, don't worry about it. We'll go over that later. For now, I think we should all get started on our own parts of this plan. While they all do, Shadow, you have to come with me and the nurses to make sure everything on your new body is working right. After that, we can keep all this going. Stormy said, getting up finally. But I wanted to talk to my friends a little longer. I said, my eyes drifting over to Aura, who winked at me. You can play hide the hoof later. Right now, you need to get your body moving, Stormy said, rolling her orange eyes, but I caught a slight grin as I blushed. Fine, but I'm sure everything's fine with my prosthetics. In fact, I'll probably live forever now that I'm 30% plastic, I said sarcastically. My friends all laughed as I sighed. After a moment, Solstice said, I'll go talk with my mom and see what she can do. I'll also see if she can push back the trial by a day or two and see if we have a little more time to make this all work. Good idea, Stormy said. What do you want me to do then? Hailstorm asked, looking a little confused. I think you should head back to the Sins and start spying on them for us, I said as I started to get out of bed, my body protesting a little bit. Do you have a broadcaster? He nodded. Yeah, though it doesn't have a lot of range. Best I can reach is about 20 kilometers, maybe 30. I've been trying to find a new one with better range, but unfortunately, back in the day, Awesome Bye killed the Stereo Shack, and then got looted after the war to the point that it is almost impossible to find a broadcaster that's not already being used on something else or gotten worn out, or find one that's been properly refurbished. Good goddesses. He doesn't stop talking. Okay, okay, that's fine. Give me the broadcast ID so I can get in contact with you when I'm back in New Pegasus. Then you can update me on what's going on. If it looks like they're going to be making a move on New Pegasus before I'm back, then head to the Shadow Talons base in Freedom and let Aura or one of her sisters know. If you can't do that, then go to Frosty Summit and find a ghoul called Nexus or his bodyguard Laser Light. They should be able to get the message to me. I said. I can do that, he said, taking the helmet off of his power armor on his flank and putting it on. Hey, Dusty, don't go getting yourself killed up in Stratus. We got a lot to catch up on. I wish he could have stayed longer, Stardust said sadly. Me too. He's kind of cute. Though, he must have a screw loose if he's taken orders from Shadow. Solstice teased. I sighed and gently got to my hooves. Ah, he's a synth. Don't ask me why, but he's taking orders from me for some reason. He won't even listen to Stormy. It's useful, but awful at the same time. Like having an annoying unpaid butler serving you against their will. Stardust got a smile on his face that warned me he was about to be an asshole. Then closed his eyes and cleared his throat with a hoof to his mouth and said in a trottish accent, at the Academy, we call those slaves, Miss Star. Although, those of us in the upper class prefer to call them serfs. The term slave is just so common. Common meaning poor. I stuck my tongue out at him and replied in my best trottish askin. Piss off. Wait, that's a synth? Hell, I know they can look quite real, but damn, I couldn't even tell. Stardust's right, though. He's basically a slave. Surf would be pushing it, considering you don't feed him or provide him with a place to live. Seems stable education isn't all it's cracked up to be, Solstice said. Stormy sighed. He's one of the newest models of the Generation 3s, just like the one we used to make Shadow Synth for Aquila. 
They're almost perfect, though they take a lot to build when they have memories of other ponies like Hailstorm does. They're hard to control because they think they're real ponies. Honestly, it's a little sad how much you can break their reality when you accidentally get them to realize they're just an amalgamation of science, technology, and bodily fluids from some pony who's died. Why is he only taking orders from Shadow? Windthrasher asked. Grimm must have changed the programming in his corsetship. Normally, he should listen to myself, Grimm, and the director at least, but he's not, Stormy said. Wind Thrasher looked over at Stardust. Why aren't you angry they made your friend into a synth? Still looking sad, Stardust said. Eh, yeah, because even if he's not the same Hailstorm I lost, it's the closest thing to having him back from the dead I'm ever going to get. Hailstorm was like my brother growing up. Losing him was one of the hardest things I've ever gone through. We all looked away at that. Each one of us had lost some pony in the past, and None of us could argue his point. I knew that if I could get Mom, Box Tape, Silver, and more back, even as a synth, I would. After a moron, Aura spoke up, saying, What I don't get is, why did you all make a synth of Hailstorm? Stardust answered for Stormy, replying, He was the best fighter in 97, even better than me. He excelled at everything. He was the one who taught me how to shoot and fight. When he died, they lost their best chance to get a perfect soldier. Making a synth to him with all of his memories and ability was too hard of an opportunity to pass up. That's just wrong, Aura said, looking disgusted. I thought you were meant to be the perfect soldier, Stardust, Windthrasher said. I did too, but I guess they needed two, he answered. Stormy looked a little ashamed as she said, Actually, Stardust, we never expected you to live past your tenth year. He looked up in shock. What do you mean? She sighed, then continued. Out of all the ponies we put into 97, half of the foals were controls for the real experiment. Hailstrom and a few others from your year were genetically modified, much like the pony who's called Sloth was. Only we did a better job and started with foals instead of teenagers like we did with Sloth. We needed unaltered stallions and mares to work as a control to make sure the experiments were working. At your tenth year, we started the trials. You might remember those? Yeah, a few of us died from those, he said, starting to look angry. She rolled her eyes. None of them died. We just made you think they did. Every pony who fell out of the trials just had their memories replaced and modified. Then they were sent to different parts of the Enclave to live a normal life. Anyway, before the first trial, you were ranked very low, and we thought you would have been kicked out because of it. Though Doorstop had faith in you, he figured that because of your family line, you'd prove me wrong. My family line? You know who my family line is? He asked. No, I don't. I wasn't in charge of the foals who were taken... When you all came to me, you were just numbers to me at the time. Doorstop on the other hoof does know more about you. If you want answers, you'll have to ask him, he said. Believe me, I will. Anyway, keep the story going, he said, gesturing his hoof in a circular motion. Anyway, as I was saying, when you did your first test, you passed with flying colors. You tied with Hailstorm in the long shot trial and surpassed him on the hoof to hoof trial. You were able to outfly most of your class. You figured out things better than most of the modified ponies. As you grew, I saw something amazing a control outperforming science. By the time, just before you escaped, you were on par with Hailstrom and the only control left in the stable. That was when I knew that my whole project was wrong, and I helped get you broken out. Hailstorm and you were the two I needed to fix the project and make it better, but away from Enclave control. As you know, he didn't make it out, and you did. So you made a new Hailstorm to try and keep your legal program going? He asked. At first I did, but only working with the Ministry and not the Enclave, he said. 
And what about now? He pressed. Stormy looked over at me, then back to Shadow. Now I can see that my entire program was a bad idea, and I have no plans anymore of keeping it going. Honestly, when I started the Devil's Child and Program, I was a different mayor back then. Twenty-one years can change a pony. He got up angrily, then said, You're damn right it was a bad idea. I have no family thanks to you. And the ponies who helped you? I grew up in hell, and thanks to you... He was cut off by Stormy. She raised her voice, saying, And, thanks to me, you learned how to fight and survive. Thanks to me, you were able to escape and later find Shadow, who has done a lot of good for the Wasteland and a lot of ponies. Thanks to me, you live in a better life than most Pegasi do below the clouds. You're free, and that's something that most Pegasi never get to experience. Yes, I agree, my project was a terrible idea, and it went too far. But look at your life now and tell me it wasn't worth it. Without you there to save Shadow on multiple occasions, the Wasteland would have been fucked because she'd either be dead or worse, assimilated by a monster. He looked a little shocked by her outburst. Then he looked at all of us, stopping on Wind Thrasher. A small smile came to his lips as he sighed. Yeah, I guess you're right. Thanks to you, I have some of the best stallion, friends a stallion could ask for. And an old one returned. Stormy sniffed indignantly. Damn right. Then she looked over at me, saying, Shadow, it's about time we get you to your PT. We can talk about what we're going to do next, later. With that said, she got up and helped me to my hooves. I wobbled a little, finding a new limb a little weird to walk on. It didn't hurt, but it was like trying to balance on a stiff piece of wood rather than a foreleg. But after a moment, I found my balance and slowly followed Stormy out of the room. It's still weird walking on something that you weren't born with. I don't think I'll ever get over it. I can feel it and everything, but something about it just feels like fake. Like a super expensive knockoff of something nature made, but science couldn't. My friends said they'd see me later. Aura finishing with a kiss before following Solstice to the room we shared while we were at the Ministry. The next few days were going to be rough. But I told myself that no matter what, we'd stop Aquila and save Thundercracker and my father. Thundercracker might have been greed at one point, but now he was a friend, and he only got caught because he was helping me. I won't let him die for that. 